Hey guys, once again, welcome back to the biggest agricultural platform in Namibia known as Nduna Wengombe, which means in English, headman of cattle. I am, of course, your cattle headman. My name is Mitchell Mutumba Simata, and I am the host of this program. I'll be taking you through this agricultural journey. So today I want to talk of uh, English, another old English breed, a breed of cattle that is named after a place in England, uh, which is the Red Sussex cattle. So this is how they look like. That's a Sussex bull. That's a Sussex uh, cow with a very well-developed udder. There's a Sussex cow and calf. The pictures are a contrast of the Namibian livestock uh, catalogue. They're red cattle. The first time I saw them, I thought they were African, I mean, not Afrikaner, but Bosmaras. But over time, I actually started learning that it's actually an, indi an individual breed on its own. So, a bit history on some information that I collected, a bit history on the breed. Of course, you always need to know the history of the breed. So they say the Sussex cattle breed is one of the oldest and purest uh, and purest uh, breeds of, of, of the English cattle. And it is now a large part of the beef production industry in South Africa. The information is contrast of the Sussex website so uh, of South Africa. According to the cattle site, it is thought to have descended from the horned red cattle once found throughout much of the south, southern England, inhabiting dense forests to the Wali lands of Sussex and Kent. These cattle were used as draft animals for several years before being primed for beef production from the age of six. Then they say production, today production in South Africa. So, the first Sussex cattle, were inc were, which included 20 cows, were imported to South Africa in 1903 by Alex Homer. Alex Homer of the Porchestrom Agricultural College. His task was to select a breed that could adapt to the south to the south african climate so that was the mindset behind them importing the sussex so they say six years later additional cows were imported and by 1920 about 85 bulls had already had already been sold to farmers over time various breeders decided to better liaison with one another resulting in the establishment of the sussex cattle breeder society society of south africa in May 1920. So 1920 was when the animal was, the society was created, where, where, where the Sussex Society was created in South Africa. They say attributes of the, of the, so they say the attributes. The Sussex is an early maturing, medium framed uh, beef animal with a smooth, highly hedatory, deep red coat and white tail. So that's the colors, as you see, deep red coat, deep red coat with, with some white tail. Yeah, okay. It's deep red coated, covered red all over with a white tail. So that's hedatory. So they say the breed has an excellent temperament, which makes them easily to handle and has resulted in their in their trouble-free reputation. So it's considered to be a trouble-free animal. It's not you hey, hey, woo, hey, hey type of cattle breed. Nah, it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a trouble-free animal. It's, it has a reputation for being a trouble-free animal. They say the cows are famous for their uh, maternal instinct with, em with implement with a lot of milk and constant high calving rates. Good milk, good calving rates. Showing their excellent fertility, bulls show strong masculine, mus muscular, muscular characteristics and depth. So they show good muscles. Uh, the picture even here. The bull is well uh, developed, well confirmed. Look at the legs, the chest. The, the legs and chest you see well well developed muscle and good depth so they say the sussex cattle are naturally horned so breeders had to comply with the rules to the horn so they are horned animals but then they continue to say an increased number of breeders make use of polled bulls to in to implement the polled genetics so they can come horned or not horned you can get horned sussex which grow horns or you can get the ones which are pole headed so they say that this were breeders who did this. Implemented the pole genetic into their herds. Some semen of pole bulls have been imported and there is, there is currently a pool of different pole genetics available. This is in South Africa. I don't know about in Namibia if we have different, uh, different, uh, different uh, uh, genetic material of pole cattle in Namibia. I'm not sure. But this is in South Africa, by the way. One continues to say, Sussex, Sussex uh, mature early, which allows them to bre which allow breeders to market them off the felt or pastures. It is an, econo an economical converter of concentrate feeds and attains weight and attain weight gains, which make the breed highly sought after by feedlot operations. 
So if you want to run a feedlot or you're trying to supply a feedlot, you can't look at the Sussex cattle. Look like the feedlots want them. They say production regions. This is in South Africa, guys. So they say the Sussex stud breeders have been found in all nine provinces of South Africa. So they, they, you can find them in all nine provinces of uh, South Africa, as well as in Namibia. Here, I believe it's Mr. Kobus uh, van der Merwe, St. Blaise, uh, Sussex, uh, Zimbabwe, and Botswana, providing, uh, providing to the needs of commercial cattle farmers. Sussex animals thrive under extreme, extreme, extreme African climates like the severe cold, the, the cold of the Drakensberg and Eastern Cape Mountains. Uh, through um, throughout to the sand of the Kalahari and the Bushveld, as well as the tropic, as well as the tropical KwaZulu Natal, to the Karoo and everything in between, this conf this confirms their remarkable adaptability. So, it's an animal that seems to be farmed in wide ranges of different climates in South Africa. Where they're mentioning the colder weather to the hotter weather to the sandy areas to the mountainous areas and to the dry Karoo. So it looks like it could be a breed that could perform uh, excellently well in Namibia. But like I said, Mr. Kobus from the Merva farms, I mean, I believe there are other breeders in Namibia. One thing I would say is if you want an animal to perform, buy animals from environments that are quite similar to yours. Don't just buy cattle because a cattle is. As I said, if you're going to farm it in an area like the Zambezi, which is humid and wet, it's better that you buy your bull probably from a breeder who's in Hurtfontein or Otavi area because the conditions are almost similar. But they continue to go, the uses of the Sussex. The Sussex animals perform well either as pure breed or when crossed. Bulls, de bulls uh, deliver high pre-potency, high pre-potency, hardiness and good winning weights and excellent post-winning. Uh, post Sussex cattle are highly recommended to all cross-breeding programs to add additional winning weight. Um, they continue to say, Sussex bulls, Sussex bulls with the X, with the S, with the dollar, okay, we can say SX, dollar S, X brand marker on its left shoulder, on the left shoulder, comply with the performance standards set out by the Sussex, uh, Sussex Cattle Breeder Society of South, Af of South Africa and have been visually inspected by a senior inspector of the society. The SX brand is is a quality assurance mark for each animal and and when using Sussex bulls Sussex bulls farmers should ensure that the animals have been branded with the SX marker I'll show you this S, SX marker I drew it I hope it's clear that's the marker they're talking about that's the marker if you're buying a Sussex bull from a commercial I mean from a stud breeder who breeds Sussex cattle all is you should buy bulls with this marker this is almost as important as the as the as the B is the B for the Bosmara or the S for the Simbra. So this is the mark you should look for on the left shoulder of the Sussex cat animals. Okay, I got numbers. Uh, Full-grown Sussex cow, but remember, weight of an animal also depend on the condition the animal finds itself. But they say full-grown uh, Sussex cow could weigh about 585 kgs. Bulls could weigh about 950 kgs. Winning could be at 230 kgs. So that is the different weight of uh, the Sussex animals. You can weigh them at 200 and and 30 so those are the numbers so that is my or not my let me say that is uh, information contrast of the sussex uh, society website online where you can uh, look at some sus about information on the sussex animals and that is my uh, two cents on them it's a wonderful breed as i said uh, deep red animal very nice deep red animal very nice and uh, as they're saying in South Africa, they are farmed in most nine provinces of South Africa. So it looks like it's a good, it's a good animal when it comes to adapting. It won't really be a problem. So it's a breed that you can give a look at if you are trying to get into the winter production and supply uh, animals for feedlots. Seems like Sussex is the way to go. Full-grown bull is 950. Full-grown cow is 585. You can win them at about 230. And remember, look for this logo. When you're buying a register, when you're buying bulls from a registered breeder, look for that, uh, look for that brand, because that tells you that the animal has been certified by a, an, 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 a sorry, a senior ins inspector. So those are my two cents, guys. Um, for now, I just want to say, bye for now. Enjoy your day further.